I'm Brianna with Screwfreeder Pro, and in this video, we aim to dispel much of the confusion surrounding how to write a TV pilot episode. We'll strip back everything to its bare basics and give you a solid foundation on which to write one from the ground up. So here's the thing. The problem is the world of TV can be a confusing place for an aspiring writer. There's multi-camera versus single camera, networks versus cable, serials versus episodic, limited series versus anthologies. The problem with most advice on writing a TV pilot is that it's top down. That is, you'll hear lots of nuggets of information like know your audience and include setups and payoffs. What's missing here is real advice on how to actually craft a compelling story execs will want to buy. We all know, for example, that writing is rewriting, but Advice like this doesn't really help much if you don't have a strategic plan for writing the first draft in the first place. You might be left blindly writing and rewriting the same mistakes. To approach how to write a TV pilot script from the ground up means approaching it systematically with a game plan. Before we get started, let's take a look at a few industry definitions. What is a spec TV pilot script? As an aspiring writer, you'll be writing a TV pilot episode on spec. That is, speculatively for free with the hope someone in the industry will read it and like it enough to either take you on, either as a client, as a staff member, or maybe even buy the show. Back in the day, it was common for aspiring writers to write a spec television pilot based on an existing, usually currently on air, show. This would be used as a calling card to show off their writing chops and get hired on the writing staff. However, after years of industry people getting flooded with spec, 30 rock, and soprano scripts, the process has changed a little. Nowadays though, it's more advisable to write a TV pilot based on your own original idea. People wanna see not only that you can write to order, but you have the imagination to come up with original, exciting ideas and sustain them over the course of a whole season. Very few writers, especially aspiring writers, are lucky enough to have their script go straight to series. In other words, have a studio buy their entire series and put it straight on air without first making a pilot. This is slowly changing, but most TV writers still have to go through the nail-biting hell known as pilot season. This is the five or so months from January through May when dozens of pilots get made, but not all of them get picked up or even given the green light to be made into a series. What's a TV pilot and do I need one? All you need to worry about is how to write a TV pilot episode. Don't even worry about coming up with 10 episodes for a whole season. And there's no need right now to come up with a show bible. This is a more polished outline designed to show execs and producers when you're hawking the script around town. You'll need to write an outline, a breakdown of the story and characters, but a bible can wait until you've garnered some interest in the pilot TV show. For now though, let's get started with writing a pilot script. How to write a TV pilot script step number one, focus on your reason for writing it. So you may already have a pilot series you're working on, or at least an idea of the kind of one you like to write. When it comes to writing a television pilot though, the first step is to understand why you want to write it. We often hear writers give reasons like these as to why they want to write a TV pilot episode. I hear I need one in my portfolio. It's easier than writing a feature. I want to sell it ASAP. I'll write a sitcom because it's only 30 pages. All of these reasons are fair enough, but You'll stand much more chances of writing a TV pilot episode that will actually sell if you're actually passionate about television in the first place. Keep in mind, it's passion plus the long haul. If you have an idea for a story that you're excited about and think it belongs on the small screen rather than the big screen, then this passion is more likely to come out in your writing. While comedy TV pilots, for example, are often only around 25 to 35 pages long, this doesn't make writing them any easier. In fact, it's often harder to write comedy, so you need to make sure you're certain you're in it for the long haul, i.e. months and months of rewrites, and about potentially repeating this process over multiple episodes without getting bored with writing about the same characters. So let's stick with the comedy pilot example for a moment. Have you spent your life watching sitcoms from when you were a kid? Can you recite lines from your favorite episodes? Do you love throwing out one-liners with your friends? Do you know the names of your favorite writers and follow them from show to show? Answering yes to most of the above is a sign you have the dedication and passion to succeed as a TV comedy writer. Alternatively, if you've already mastered how to write features and decided now's the time to write a pilot script, this is a more strategic move, but it's also a sensible one. It's true that the more variety you have in your portfolio, the better. Television's a great place for writers at the moment, so don't hesitate to grab a piece of the pie. How to write a TV pilot script number two. 
select three of your favorite shows. This is where you take all that repetitive top-down advice you've heard on how to write a TV pilot script and instead approach it from the other way around. Advice such as make sure you fully set up the world of the story or remember to include three clear A, B, and C stories isn't necessarily wrong. It's just not very easy to actually apply. However, by studying how the pilots of three of your favorite shows set up the story world, define their A, B, and C stories, plant payoffs, etc., you'll learn how to do the same in your own TV pilot episode. Start by selecting six TV shows that most resemble the kind of TV pilot script you want to write. These should arc back to your reason for wanting to write the show in the first place and your passion for television as discussed in the previous step. To help with this, have a think about the following three questions. What are six TV shows you wish you'd written? What is it about them you love so much? What shows can you watch over and over again? Got six? Good. Now it's time to define the list in two ways, by genre and format. TV pilot genre. Start by seeing which shows overlap on the list when it comes to genre. Focus on which major similarities there are between your choices. Are they mainly comedies, political dramas, or fantasy action and adventures? If so, you already know pretty much what genre your television pilot is going to be. On the other hand, if you selected one comedy, one crime drama, three police procedurals, and a sci-fi thriller, then you need to give it a little more thought. This is because as you're starting out learning how to write a TV pilot script, it's best to hone your skills in only one genre. Even though there's much blending of genres going on in TV right now, with shows like Stranger Things mixing crime drama, comedy, fantasy, and horror, try to nail down which broad genre you think you'd have the most fun writing. Don't worry about budgets or what's hot right now on TV. Focus on your passion and what types of characters and situations you can imagine still being inspired to write about in a year's time. TV pilot script format. Once you've decided which genre you'd like to focus on, it's time to refine the list down to a single TV pilot format. Take a look at your six shows and see where they overlap regarding the four major formats, episodic, serial, anthology, or limited. Here's a quick breakdown of each. Episodic. These are shows with self-contained stories each week. You generally don't need to know what happened the previous week because it's a new episode and an entirely new story, but with the same cast of characters. Examples of episodic TV shows are Community, Law & Order, The X-Files. While each episode is self-contained, these shows can also often have overarching stories from season to season. Ross and Rachel's relationship in Friends, for example, has continual ups and downs that span the entire course of the show in one long sustained storyline. Serial. The key difference here is that it's essential you've seen the previous episode because otherwise you're not going to know what's going on. It's one big story told over many seasons with each episode progressing the plot. Examples of TV serials include Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Generally regarded as more highbrow than episodic TV, Serials tend to be where we get the notion we're in the middle of television's golden age. Anthology series are kind of a mix of episodic and serial TV shows in that they contain self-contained seasons instead of episodes. An anthology series will usually feature the same location, genre, and themes, but changes cast from season to season. Some examples include American Horror Story, Fargo, and The Sinner. Anthology series have made a major comeback in recent years as a general trend towards better written and produced television has increased. Formerly known as a miniseries, a limited series tells a complete story from beginning to end in around eight to 10 episodes. A bit like taking a whole serial and condensing it down to just one season. Here are some examples of popular limited TV series. Feud, Betty and Joan, Sharp Objects, Twin Peaks, The Return. The problem with limited series is that they're often so popular that producers can't really resist extending them into anthologies or serials, but at the risk of losing their appeal. Some people argue that Big Little Lies and Stranger Things, for example, might have been better off left as a limited series. Now, nail it down to three TV shows. By considering how your six favorite TV shows fit into these genres and formats, you'll hopefully be able to select three that share both of these elements in common. If your list contains 30 Rock, The Big Bang Theory, Kirby Enthusiasm, Frasier, Modern Family and Parks and Recreation, for example, then it's clear that the three TV pilots to select should either be single camera or multi-camera sitcoms. 
If, on the other hand, your list contains Big Little Lies, The Sinner, Sharp Objects, and Twin Peaks, The Return, then it's clear you're most inclined towards crime drama, whether that's as a limited series or a serial. Once you have three shows, it's time to break down and analyze them. Yes, great writing requires originality, but it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's built upon and inspired by great writing that came before it. By analyzing the TV pilots and shows you love, you'll gain a stronger grasp for why you love them and what makes them work. Then you can move on to actually writing your own. While you might have a great idea and just want to get stuck into writing, don't underestimate the importance of this prep work. To skip it is essentially the same as expecting Jimi Hendrix to have come up with Purple Haze out of nowhere without first spending years studying and playing rhythm and blues. You need a solid foundation for this harder than it looks enterprise of writing a TV pilot episode. And that foundation can be built through your watching, rewatching, studying, and breaking down the kind of pilot TV show you want to write. How to write a TV pilot script step three, outline other TV pilots. This is the initial first step in order to get you really stuck into the process of deconstructing your three favorite TV shows, outlining them. This is a simple yet very powerful practical exercise that will help you understand all about strong character introductions, story world setups, A, B, and C stories, and so on, in a much more hands-on way than just being told you need them. So how do you outline a TV pilot? Well, start with the first TV pilot episode on your list and follow these steps. Create a new document and name it after the pilot TV series. Something like The Purge, Outline. In another tab, bring up the show's details in IMDb. This is handy for adding character names as each episode progresses. Start the pilot show and simply begin typing what you see on screen. Summarize each scene into a few short sentences that capture the absolute essentials needed to know what's happening. For example, the opening three scenes of the Purge pilot should look something like this. People shower together in some kind of facility. Afterwards, they put on identical blue robes. They look happy. One of the women, Penelope, drives down the freeway while narrating a letter to Miguel, letting him know she's okay. She's joining her parents on the anniversary of their giving. Super, 97 minutes to purge. Michael enters the facility and asks a nurse if he can see Penelope. The nurse tells him she checked out months ago. He finds out she left with a guy named Henry. Note how you don't need to include every little detail such as what Miguel's wearing or his pep talk about overcoming fear to the nurse's son. Just put down the bare bones needed to understand what the overall purpose of each scene is. It can be a little tricky at first to keep up with the speed of the action, but after a little practice, it becomes fairly easy to outline in real time without continually having to pause the show. You should end up with a document a few pages long with each paragraph or sentence representing a scene in the pilot. How to write a TV pilot script step four, break down the completed outline. Now, it's time to go back and break down the outline scene into acts. Depending on the show you're outlining, it can have anything from two to five acts, but some have more. Just like in a movie, act breaks in a TV show occur at cliffhanger moments designed to keep you wondering what's gonna happen next. This is true for shows with and without commercials. And by breaking down enough shows, you'll start to see a pattern of where they occur. How to write a TV pilot script step five, read other TV scripts. Actually, it's not really a next phase, but something you should be doing concurrently as you write outlines of your favorite shows, reading the TV pilot scripts as well. Here are some more TV pilot scripts worth reading depending on your TV pilot's genre. American Horror Story, Breaking Bad, Community, Fargo, and Game of Thrones. If your chosen pilots aren't on this list, we recommend trying an internet search. The best way to find scripts is if you look for name of TV show in quotation marks, followed by pilot PDF download. The difference between outlining a TV pilot episode and reading one is that the latter will really help with dialogue and scene construction. By seeing how each scene looks on the page, as opposed to merely on screen, you'll gain a much better idea of how characters speak and how the personalities are shown by what they say. Read as many TV scripts as you can, but you should definitely be reading at least the pilot TV show in three or four episodes of each of your favorite three shows. How to write a TV pilot script, step six come up with or refine your concept. Now that you've built a solid foundation in your script's chosen genre, having written a ton of outlines and read a ton of TV pilot show scripts, the real work begins, writing. As you've probably already heard, your core concept should be original, interesting and conflict filled. If so many aspiring TV writers already know this, then why are so many spec TV pilots lacking in these areas? 
The answer lies in the writer taking on board this advice, but not acting on it. In other words, not actually applying tests to their own idea in order to make sure it's strong enough to start working on the script. The biggest reason most TV pilots don't move forward is that the studio script readers, producers, and execs are underwhelmed by the core concept, either when being pitched the logline or after reading the script. Whether you already have a TV pilot episode you're working on or if you intend to start writing one, the best thing to do is make sure you have a rock solid core concept and logline. The first step is to write out the logline to your pilot TV series one more time and be honest with yourself as you answer the following questions. What's the conflict inherent in this idea? What makes this idea different from similar shows? What are each of the characters' goals and what makes them interesting? Is this an idea that's likely to stand out in the marketplace? Would you be confident enough in this idea to pitch it to a producer? If you could write your dream show, would this be it? If you heard this show was being made, would you be excited to watch it? Answering these should flag up any originality and conflict issues if they exist. For example, imagine you're face to face with a producer and have 30 seconds to pitch your idea. Would you be 100% confident in doing so? If not, this means it probably needs work. We understand that being objective about your own ideas and creativity can be extremely tough. The log line may seem fine to you, but is fine good enough? Is it really strong enough to start writing the pilot script? On the other hand, you may think the idea is not up to much, but in reality, it's an incredible idea that you've been putting off writing for way too long. That's why it's never really a good idea to rely solely on your own judgment, but instead get some input from other people, specifically writers who work in TV. If you know someone who works in the industry, ask them what they think of your idea. Try to get them to be as objective as possible by saying something like, I'm not wedded to this idea, so just be honest. If you don't know anyone in the business, you can also ask friends and family, post a log line on sites like Stage 32, or get some script coverage on your idea from a professional script consultancy. If you're feeling really brave, ask strangers in coffee shops. This way, you'll get a straight up no frills reaction to your idea. How to make sure there's enough conflict in your TV pilot. A TV pilot episode can never have too much conflict. Return to the log line and think about how, in line with all the shows you've outlined in red, the conflict could be tightened and made even more exciting. When it comes to the core concept in television, the idea can be broken down like this. Protagonist plus story world equals conflict. All three elements should be more or less indistinguishable from each other and feed off of each other. As touched on earlier, the protagonist should be the one person who's got the most to lose from being placed in the particular story world. They should be the one character who's going to suffer the most from this conflict, and also the one who does the most week in and week out to drive the action trying to solve it. Let's take a look at Frasier, Stranger Things, and Sharp Objects again for examples. Frasier being a stuck-up snob is the perfect character to be forced into a story world living with his blue-collar father, dog, and home care provider. If you were more easygoing, the show wouldn't work because the characters wouldn't cause conflict in each other's lives. Frasier is the character who drives the action, trying to solve his various problems. Three innocent, imaginative boys are the perfect characters to have a best friend be abducted by an alien. If they were all grown up, UFO hunters the concept wouldn't be as interesting because they'd already be familiar with living in an adult world and the extraterrestrial. They're the primary characters who push the story forward as they try to find their friend. Camille, the self-harming alcoholic reporter, is the perfect character to be forced to return to her hometown to report on the murder of a young girl and move back in with her deranged mother. If Camille's childhood had been great and she was just a regular reporter, then returning home to cover the case wouldn't generate any conflict within her or for the show. How to make sure your TV show's idea is original? TV shows live or die on their originality. With so many spec TV pilots circulating Hollywood, for something new to catch the attention of an executive or a producer, it needs to be super original. It needs to be something we've never seen before, or at least something we've seen before but with a different twist on it. We've seen a hundred shows and movies in which kids run around trying to solve a mystery, but not one which so successfully mixes mystery, sci-fi, human, and horror with a wonderfully nostalgic 80s retro vibe. This is what makes the Stranger Things pilot stand out. Stick to one core idea that you want to develop over the course of the season. Rather than having a log line like this, 
a group of supernatural beings raised by American foster parents become pseudo superheroes and try to understand their powers while reaping the souls of malevolent individuals and saving the world from an evil mastermind intent on world domination. This logline has too much going on. The ideas are good, but it needs refining down to one single clear conflict. Otherwise, the story feels muddied. The best way to do this is to focus on the protagonist's main goal and make sure the antagonist is in direct opposition to it. Let's take a look at how this is done in our three shows. Frasier wants to live alone, but his father moves in. The kids want to find their missing friend, but he's been kidnapped by a powerful mystery force. Camille wants to find out who murdered the girl, but her past gets in the way. It's about pulling the audience in through the character's individual stories and slowly developing relationships. List all of your major characters and make sure each one has a goal during the course of the pilot series. When you're sure the logline is watertight, it's time to start the next step in the process of writing a TV pilot episode. How to write a TV pilot script step number seven, start outlining or editing your pilot. We recommend that you leave writing the TV pilot script until last. The best next step is to write an outline of what you want to include in it. As you should already be used to the practice of writing outlines, this process should be somewhat easier than if you haven't already broken down the numerous TV episodes. Different writers have different methods of coming up with blueprints for their television pilot show before actually writing it. Some write one scene per sentence or paragraph outline as we've already discussed. Others write out their scenes on index cards and stick them to a cork board so they can visually see how everything maps out. Others prefer to start by writing a detailed document in prose form, either a treatment or a show bible. This isn't an exact science. It doesn't really matter which method you choose. The important thing is that you get down a skeletal blueprint of what happens in your TV pilot before you start writing it. While some writers like to dive straight in and start writing the pilot script without an outline, this is a risky move. Without an outline, it's hard to properly structure the pilot episode and make sure the conflict is as focused as it can be. In short, going this route is likely to result in quite a bit of rewriting, which can be avoided by simply mapping out the show beforehand. Start thinking about how you're going to approach the TV pilot structure in the script. Start with the big act breaks. What happens at each? What big events throw the story in a completely unexpected direction? pouring more misery on the protagonist. What are the big story beats for each plot line? Get into the scenes in each act. Plot each one so the protagonist is actively working towards their goal. One that succeeds or fails at the end of each act break. Write a sentence or two for each scene, just like in the outlines you created for your favorite shows. What's the purpose of each scene? What do you want to show the audience about a particular character or relationship? There's no real need to include dialogue in here unless something particularly telling or witty jumps out at you. Once it's finished, step away for at least a week before rereading it. The small amount of distance should give you the chance to see it again with fresh eyes. If you keep plowing on without backing away once in a while, you're likely to become too close to the story and unable to see obvious faults in it or with the characters. So write a draft of the outline, take a break, rewrite, take a break, etc. Although you don't actually need to write a full TV Bible at this stage, reading Bibles for existing shows can be really helpful. It will help you see how the creators formulate their ideas in one concise document. Again, remember to ask others for feedback along the way. If you don't know anyone in the industry, we actually have a story analysis service in which you can send us your outline, treatment, or Bible. One of our professional TV writers will then give you feedback on what's working and how to fix what's not. Overall, we advise not skipping on the outlining part. It may be tiresome, but you don't want to wind up having to do a huge rewrite because you've just had a major epiphany about the protagonist midway through writing the script. How to write a TV pilot script step number eight. Start writing. Finally, it's time to write the script. If you've already spent a great deal of time outlining and breaking down your favorite shows, as well as your own pilot, this stage should actually be fairly straightforward. If the concept, story, and characters are airtight, now it's a case of following the outline and writing the scenes in as exciting a way as possible. Of course, this is easier said than done. There's way too much information on how to write characters and dialogue, develop themes and conflict to go into in this video alone, so we recommend doing some further research after watching this video. Once you have a completed draft, repeat the exercise of getting as much feedback as you can on your TV pilot episode. 
Are you seeing the theme here? Another great way to get a really strong idea of how good your script is, is to put it through the trials and tribulations of a table read. Get some friends together or join a writing group that does table reads and hear how your pilot sounds when read aloud. This is something professional writers do all the time and it should be in your arsenal of feedback options too. Listen, I know this is a long video, but we hope we've gone some way to answering how to write a TV pilot script for you. In short, for your TV pilot to be successful, it requires as much research and background work as it does actual writing. Don't fall into the trap of jumping straight into writing the script. Work out what the core conflict is, discover what makes it engaging and what sets it apart from everything that's gone before. If you really want to know how to write a TV pilot script, ask yourself, what kind of new TV pilot episode would you want to watch? What kind of characters and situations would you most like to see on screen? What kind of show do you wish was available on Netflix but isn't? This is the TV pilot script you should aim to write. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And while you're down there, why don't you let us know? How do you go about writing a pilot for a TV show? And what are your favorite TV pilot scripts? If you're enjoying this content on this channel, be sure to check out the rest of the videos that we have and you can go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you receive an alert anytime we upload. And finally, if you would like some affordable feedback on your script from a professional screenwriter, be sure to check out the link in our description bar below. Catch you in the next video, guys. Bye.